Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Tiffany Hansen. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do the half double crochet stitch and the double crochet stitch. Both of these stitches are basic crochet stitches that you will see in almost any crochet pattern. So it's really good to have these stitches under your belt, know how to do them. Uh, this is also a fantastic video for any absolute beginner crocheter who is wanting to know just the absolute beginner crochet stitches. You will see the half double crochet stitch a lot and you will see the double crochet stitch a lot. The abbreviations for the half double crochet stitch can also be seen as an HDC. The double crochet stitch abbreviation will be seen as a DC. Just to give you an idea of what you're looking at in reference to a pattern or if somebody is showing you what to do and they only want to use the abbreviations and not the full name of the stitch. Let's begin with the actual half double crochet stitch. You can use any yarn and any crochet hook to make this stitch and it will be visible and beautiful and you can use this stitch with super thin yarn or even up to super bulky yarn and it's a fantastic stitch to work with. Beginning with a long enough tail so we can weave in our ends at the end of the project. We create our slip knot, attach our crochet hook, and we are ready to begin. Start with just a normal chain. I'm going to only chain 15 chains just to show you the actual stitch itself. One, two, three, Four, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Great. Once you have completed your chain, foundation row chain for your project, we are ready to move on to row one. For row one, making a half double crochet stitch, we will skip the very first stitch, very first chain here, looking for our V shape, skipping the very first V shape, and our first stitch will be in the second chain from our crochet hook. You will yarn over, insert your crochet hook into that second chain, yarn over again, however you can get that yarn underneath that claw, okay? To pull that yarn through that stitch. You should have three loops on your crochet hook you will yarn over again, pull that yarn through all three loops, and that is a half double crochet. That's it. Yarn over again, insert your crochet hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull that yarn through the stitch, leaving you with three loops on your crochet hook, yarn over again, and pull that yarn through all three loops. Perfect. You will want to keep your tension light here. You're not going to want a tight tension because if you do a tight tension, let me see if I can do it. If you work really, really tight and you force that yarn through the loop, that's a really, really tight stitch right there. That's fine for the first row, but then when you turn your work to work back into those stitches, it's really hard. You're gonna be forcing your crochet hook into stitches. You're going to be just really struggling with your work. So what's great about crochet is we can remove our crochet hook, pull on our working yarn, which is the yarn attached to our skein of yarn, pull those stitches loose, reinsert a crochet hook and just keep going. Again, half double crochet stitch, yarning over, inserting a crochet hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, three loops on a crochet hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Let's go ahead and finish off this row one off of the foundation row. I will meet you at the end of this row one to show you how we move on to row two. Okay, last stitch here, last chain. Very nice, we've reached the end of row one. To move on to row two, we will chain one. This is known as our turning chain, which helps us to 
return our work and get to row two. In row two, we will yarn over, insert our crochet hook into the very first stitch or the very top of our last half double crochet, yarn over, pull through, I have three loops on my crochet hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. This is a half double crochet stitch. If you were to continue working row after row after row, this is what you will end up having. How you can count your rows with a half double crochet stitch. So I have a grouping here. And then if I go diagonal, I'll see a grouping here. And then my line. Grouping here. And then a grouping here. And then a line. So each grouping is a row. So group, oh, there's row one. Oh, another group. There's row two. Oh, another group. There's row three. And that should really, really help you to identify how many rows you are making when you're actually making a project. When you are ready to finish your row, let's finish row two, and then I'll show you how to tie off your work so that way you can stop. Great, last stitch here. Perfect, let's say we are ready to stop. We've ended our project. Grab your scissors, cut your yarn. You will yarn over and pull that yarn all the way through the loop. Pull tight for a slip knot. And now you are ready to just grab your yarn needle and weave in your ends into the project to clean it up and you are done. That is how you do a half double crochet stitch. To do the double crochet stitch, we will start with any size yarn. This is another stitch where you can use any size yarn from extra thin to super bulky. This is a fantastic stitch to work with. Beginning with a long enough tail to weave in your ends at the end of the project, we will create our slip knot, attach our crochet hook, and begin with a chain of 15. I'm only gonna make 15 chains for our little example, but this is where you would make your foundation row for your project. So one, two, three, Four, 15, fantastic. Once you've reached the end of your foundation row, if the very first row calls for a double crochet, you will actually skip the first two chains. So looking at the first two V shapes, remember that the loop on your crochet hook does not count as a chain. We're looking for the actual V stitches. So there's one V. There's two V's. So we skip the first two chains and we will make our first stitch in the third chain. Yarning over, finding chain three, insert our crochet hook, yarn over, pull that yarn through the chain. You're left with three loops on your crochet hook. Yarn over, pull that yarn through only two of the loops on your crochet hook, leaving you with two loops still on your crochet hook. Yarn over again and pull that yarn through the last two loops on your crochet hook. And that is a double crochet stitch, leaving you with just one loop on your crochet hook. Let's do that again. Yarn over, insert your crochet hook into the next chain. Yarn over, pull that yarn through the chain, three loops on our crochet hook, yarn over, pull that yarn through only two loops, leaving us with two loops on our crochet hook, yarn over, pull that yarn through the last two loops, and that is a double crochet. Let's go ahead and finish row one. I will meet you at the end of row one to show you how we move on to row two. Last stitch of row one, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Perfect, this is what we will be looking at. To get to row two, we will chain two. One, two. 
When working with a double crochet, you will always chain two to get to your next row of double crochets. Now this is where people differ. Some people, some patterns will say that that chain two counts as your first double crochet. So they want you to make your next double crochet in the second stitch, skipping that first stitch altogether because they are saying that that chain two counting as your first double crochet stitch takes that first stitch's spot and they will have you make your first stitch in the second crochet stitch right here and then continue on making another double crochet stitch after another double crochet stitch. Some people do not like this because it can leave a bit of a gap here at the end, depending on how thick your yarn is, the materials that you are using, and what you will be doing on the side. If you are putting a border that will stretch out these stitches and really make that gap here pronounced. So some people will choose so here is the chain two. I just backed up to chain one, chain two, turn. Some people will make their first double crochet in that first stitch. Now how this will look, if I make a couple double crochet stitches here, get further in, it will pronounce itself a little bit, but this can easily be hidden by any border that you put on if you're making a blanket or it can absolutely even out. Here is what I did. This is my little swatch here with double crochets. I did put a double crochet stitch in the very first stitch. You will want to make sure you count your stitches just so that when you get to the end you do not put any stitches in that second chain. You want to stop at the top of the very first double crochet. Let's get to the end of row two so I can show you how to end row two and move on to row three. Okay, coming upon the end of row two here, finding the very last double crochet stitch that was made, we will make one double crochet stitch on top of that double crochet stitch and be done. We do not put anything in these chains we created for turning to row two, okay? Those chains we're leaving alone and we will just move straight on to row three, chain two, one, two, turning your work. Every now and then you will want to count how many stitches are in each row, making sure that each row has the same number of stitches that you had in row one. That way you can avoid any work caving in or any work flaring out. That seems to be a common brand new crocheter, even an advanced crocheter issue, depending on the stitches you're working with. If you do not count your stitches, at least every other row or every couple rows to make sure you have the same number of stitches as you did in row one, then your project has a higher probability of getting off stitches, a stitch count. How do you count your rows for double crochet stitches? They're pretty obvious. You just find the double crochet stitch and count, okay, row one. Oh, there's the next double crochet stitch. Row two, next double crochet stitch, row three. You can stretch out your work. And by stretching out your work, you can absolutely identify where the rows are located. This stitch is very easy to count rows. When you are ready to end your project in your work. Grab your scissors, cut your yarn, yarn over, pull the yarn through that loop, pull tight for a slip knot, and your project is done. You'll just have to weave in those ends to clean it up. And that is the double crochet stitch. Great, now that you know how to do the half double crochet stitch and the double crochet stitch, you are fully capable of completing so many different crochet patterns that are out there. I hope that you find this information helpful, that it gives you the confidence that you need to 
won't be able to know exactly how to do these two stitches. If you need to revisit this tutorial, see exactly how each stitch is done, do so as many times as you need until you have this memorized. And you can always refer back to this video if you need to, just for a quick refresher. Thank you so much for watching my video today. If you enjoyed this video, you might also really enjoy these videos right here. Also check out this video, which is just a recommended video for you to watch. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you with my next video. Bye guys.